It seems to be whenever I talk about high refresh rate monitors or GPU overclocking that somewhere in the comments there'll be mention of frame pacing and how it's a lot more important than frame rate. That is to imply that having a higher frame rate actually causes more stutter and more frame rate deviation. One typical comment that I'll see is that you'd rather be playing at a solid 100 FPS then be dipping from 110 to 240. So today I'm going to actually investigate this. Is there actually any merit to this claim? Do we actually see that larger frame rate deviation when we're gaming at 240 FPS? And is it actually better to ramp up those quality settings, lower your frame rate and have a more overall stable gaming experience? That's what we're going to be checking out today. Now before we dive right in, a quick primer on two very important terms that uh, we'll be mentioning a lot in this video, frame rate and frame time. They're both related to each other and they both express how smooth a given gameplay experience is. Frame rate, most of us probably know, it's the amount of frames that the GPU is rendering per second to the monitor. We're not going to be talking about monitor technologies today, by the way. I'm just going to be assuming that every frame that your GPU is rendering is going to be pushed to your monitor just to make things a lot more simple. So frame rate is the amount of frames that you're getting per second and frame time is the interval between each of those frames, usually expressed in milliseconds. So 60 frames per second, for example, means that you're receiving one frame every 16.7 milliseconds. And it's very important to note here that as humans, we don't compute how many frames we're getting per second. We don't, uh, you know, check every second, okay, that was 60 frames and now it's 70 and maybe now it's 50. We can just evaluate overall smoothness based on the interval between each frame, meaning frame times. The point that I'm getting at here is that to evaluate smoothness in an image, we really should be talking about frame times, not frame rates. One of the reasons for that is that as frame times decrease, approaching say three or four milliseconds, the corresponding frame rate can actually be quite misleading. Now, before we visit stuttering and all of that, let's talk about frame rate deviations because that seems to be one of the main claims that I see in this comments and statements. If you are gaming at a higher frame rate, you're going to see a lot more fluctuation and swing, even if there is no stuttering at all. And we need to understand that firstly, this is very game engine dependent, it really depends on what the game was built on and how that game engine responds to increases in frame rates. Taking a look at Project Cars 2, for example, the spread between the 1% lowest frame rates, that's the light blue bar, and the average frame rate, that's the dark blue bar, is very, very tight. That's a very very small deviation between the two and hence that's going to provide a very smooth gaming experience. But when we move to something like Rainbow Six Siege, we can see that that spread is a lot higher. So here's how frame rate deviations can really depend on which game you're playing. Some games will have a lot more swing and some games will not, really dependent on the game engine here. This is why some games actually have a frame rate cap because if you go beyond that, the game engine really isn't designed to be pushed beyond those levels. One classic example of this is GTA 5, where if you surpass around 180 frames per second, the game will actually just start stuttering like an absolute mess. Another reason why you might be seeing those big frame rate deviations is game design and how the game has been built. Apex Legends, for example, and Battle Royales are really notorious for this. You might be looting in a building and you might see 300 FPS, but as soon as you open that door and you see the rest of the map, you're suddenly dropping to 120, 140 FPS. The reason for that here in Apex Legends and other Battle Royales is that we have very large render distances and draw distances, so it's not the fault of the GPU or just gaming at a higher frame rate. Some games are just actually built and designed this way. When dropping from the planes, for example, we can see as low as 100 FPS, but as soon as we start looting on the map uh, in a closed area, we can see as high as 260 at 1080p with a 2080 Ti. My point being here is that there's no real way around this. This is the way the game is designed, this is the way the game is built, and so the only true way to get around this is by actually capping your frame rate. We'll talk more about that towards the end. The next question is, does frame rate deviation actually increase as frame rate increases? That is, if you are playing at a higher frame rate, does that actually mean more deviation and swing and more sort of inconsistent experience compared to if you were gaming at a lower frame rate? The short answer is yes, frame rate deviation does actually uh, expand here as we can see with these graphs. But to understand this a bit better, we have to dive a little bit deeper. So for example, let's take For Honor and let's compare the 2080 Ti with the RX 580. So with the 
2080 Ti we're averaging 217.4 FPS with a 160 FPS 1% low average and with the RX 580 we're getting a much tighter 86 FPS average and 66.5 for the 1% low. I think we could all agree that that's a massive deviation for the 2080 Ti and a lot tighter spread for the RX 580. Even when we look at the frame rate deltas and then use that as a percentage over the average frame rate, the 2080 Ti does have a much larger percentage delta. But when we actually start looking at this in terms of frame times, the story actually gets flipped. So converting this from frame rates to frame times, the 2080 Ti is increasing from 4.6 milliseconds to 6.2 millisecond frame times. That's a delta of 1.6 milliseconds. The RX 580 on the other hand is going from 11.6 milliseconds to 15 milliseconds. So that's an increase of 3.4 milliseconds. So not only is the frame time delta larger for the RX 580, making it more noticeable, it's actually more noticeable just due to human perception. In other words, what I'm trying to say here is a three millisecond increase in frame times from just two milliseconds to five milliseconds is barely noticeable because that's quite quick but from 17 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds is noticeable. That's the difference between about 60 FPS and 50 FPS, which most of us are easily able to judge. So although frame rate seems to be more sporadic as it increases, the actual frame time deviations between 140 and 240 FPS are relatively minimal and rarely perceivable by most people. If you take that same frame time deviation between 140 and 240 FPS and apply it to the 60 FPS range, it is a lot more perceivable and and immersion breaking. The next thing we'll look at now is the CPU and this is really the culprit when it comes to stuttering and frame rate stability most of the time when we're approaching those high frame rates. You see in addition to handling the networking, the AI and just the game logic, your CPU also has to send draw calls to the GPU. So every frame that needs to be rendered by the GPU, the CPU actually has to send that instruction to it. So again going back to our example of 60 frames per second, that means that the CPU needs to send a draw call to the GPU every 16.7 milliseconds. As that frame rate increases, that means that the CPU needs to send a draw call to the GPU a lot more frequently, meaning that it has a lot more work to do. This is why you'll see CPU utilization increase dramatically as frame rate increases as well, because the load is now also on the CPU. The worst case scenario here is where you'll see your CPU capped at 100% when you're playing at those higher frame rates. Now, not only does this mean that your GPU is going to be underutilized, usually around 90% or so, but it actually means that your CPU is just gonna send a draw call whenever it's ready, and that's usually what results in those stutters. So to show an example here, I tested Far Cry 5, and I tested an i3-8100 against an i5-8400 against an i7-8700K, all paired with a 2080 Ti to observe the frame time performance. That is, I wanted to see how the frame times and the stuttering performance was impacted by the choice of CPU. Now let's start off with looking at 4K, and here all three CPUs are pretty solid, they can keep up with this frame rate seeing as it is lower. There are a couple spikes for the i3, but both the i5 and the i7 are pretty solid. When we drop the resolution down to 1080p and hence increase the frame rate, here's where things get really interesting. So 1080p resolution causes a higher CPU utilization for the i3 and the i5, and this causes frequent frame time spikes for both. The i3, for example, here is spiking above 25 milliseconds consistently for the frame times. That reflects a drop of around 85 FPS on average here to below 40 FPS and basically indicates a stutter. So CPU choice definitely matters. And if you are seeing those stutters when you are playing at a higher frame rate, you will likely want to upgrade your CPU or at least overclock in the meantime. Now, if your gaming system already has a solid GPU, a powerful enough CPU, and you're still getting those frame rate deviations and stutters, it could just be due to the game that you're playing. And one thing that you could do there to avoid those if they are really jarring is to simply cap your frame rate. Now, generally for competitive shooters, you don't want to be capping your frame rate. You want to be playing with the lowest input lag possible at all times. That is to say that every update that you get to your display, you want it to be as soon as possible and the most recent frame as possible. Capping your frame rate below that amount is not only going to put you at a competitive disadvantage, but it's 
that's also going to make the game feel slightly less responsive. So there are some good ways to do this and there are some bad ways, but the good way to do it, let's just jump right into that, is to do it through RTSS or River Tuner Statistics Server. Shout out to Chris from Battle Nonsense for his testing on this. By enabling the frame rate cap here in River Tuner Statistics Server, you're essentially getting a straight frame rate line with no dips, no spikes, nothing at all, just a really consistent smooth frame rate line. Capping the frame rate this way doesn't add any noticeable input lag, whereas enabling vSync and enabling a frame rate cap in game might. So again, typically for competitive shooters or even just casual first person shooters, if you are playing to win the game, you don't want to be doing this. It is going to uh, relatively increase the input lag compared to what you would be getting if you didn't cap the frame rate. And again, you wanna be playing with the highest frame rate with the lowest input lag as possible. For role-playing games, for single-player uh, story-based games, Witcher 3, Far Cry 5, for example, those games really could benefit from capping the frame rate because you definitely don't want that fluctuation swing to be uh, immersion-breaking or jarring. So to answer the question of this video, yes, higher frame rates can give a more stuttery experience in-game if it's maxing out your CPU, your RAM, or the game engine. Otherwise, in normal circumstances, no. The game could just be unoptimized uh, battle royales, like I said, are notorious for this due to the large maps and render distances. But otherwise, no, high frame rates are not solely responsible for the more stutter that you're encountering in game. And just to reiterate the difference between frame rate and frame times, you know, with those high frame rates, you're going to see those big fluctuations. But when you actually convert them to frame times, the deviations there might only be a couple milliseconds, which you're not going to notice the difference there at those high frame rates. So hopefully we can put this one to rest now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and a comment. Let me know your thoughts down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.